tonight on American Greed Bonus Edition. In the big money world of fine and rare wine, there's one name that's spoken with awe, Rudy Kurniawan. He had the deepest cellar of the most collectible wines in the world. He was able to produce them, and that made him a star. Rich collectors want to fill their cellars with trophy wines, and Kurniawan is their source. So it kind of became a feeding frenzy for these mythical wines that really don't exist very often in the world. Selling wine to billionaires makes Kurniawan a fortune. Rudy Kurniawan loved the high life. He spent his money on every kind of luxury you can imagine. He was building a mansion in Beverly Hills. He bought cars like a Lamborghini. But when experts look closely at his bottles, they discover a massive crime. The funny thing is that this, this label has a lot of things wrong with it. This bottle, which came from Rudy Kurniawan, is counterfeit. The label in this particular case is a reproduction. It's fake. Something was too good to be true. It's called the Cote d'Or, the Golden Slope. These gently rolling hills in the Burgundy region of France produce what many consider to be the world's finest wine. There is a flavor balance that is both powerful and, and utterly soft and feminine. It is really an iron fist in a velvet glove. Visitors are often surprised by how tiny Burgundy's vineyards are. The legendary Romani Conti vineyard, for example, is just over four acres. Or to use a classic American yardstick, it's the size of three football fields. It's the most expensive piece of land in the world. And they make a finite number of bottles. You know, in a good year, they'll make 8,000 bottles of that wine. That's not very much considering the global population. At auction, a single bottle can fetch tens of thousands of dollars. So, People want this wine because it's rare. It's expensive because it's rare, but it also is, to anybody who really knows wine, the best wine in the world. Laurent Ponceau is one of Burgundy's most respected winemakers. His ancestors first produced wines from these vineyards in 1872. And Ponceau has been perfecting the family tradition since the 1980s. I have one rule, is not to have a rule. I would compare it to a chain. The chain starts with the roots of the vine and ends in the glass of wine while you're drinking. In between, you have many elements of this chain, and human beings are only one element. Having that in mind, everything I do in the vineyards is related to this idea to respect what Mother Nature is giving. In April 2008, Ponceau gets an email from a friend in New York. And he asked me a very silly question. Since when do you produce the Clos Saint-Denis? Clos Saint-Denis is one of the Grand Cru that we, we produce now. And I could not answer to this question. I had to send a, a, another question. Why are you asking? The friend replies that some of Ponceau's Clos Saint-Denis wines are going up for sale at auction. They are vintages from the 1940s to the 1970s. I was sitting, fortunately, otherwise I would fall down. <laughs> we started to produce this in 1982. Ponceau is certain the wine is fake. He learns the bottles are being sold by Rudy Kurniawan, a young Indonesian living in California. And as U.S. investigators will later prove, Rudy Kurniawan is the most notorious wine fraudster of all time, selling tens of millions of dollars in fake wine to collectors with more money than skepticism. Kurniawan's love affair with wine begins, he says, in a postcard setting, Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco. So what Rudy Kurniawan claimed was that he got hooked on wine in the early 2000s when he had a bottle of Opus One at a dinner with his father, and that he was hooked. At the time, he was in his very early 20s. And he would buy California Merlot, and I mean, he was really kind of what we call a newbie. 
In 2001, wine fraud expert Maureen Downey is working in a New York auction house when she first meets the newbie collector. One year later, they meet again. Kurniawan has amassed an impressive seller in an amazingly short time. He tells Downey he wants to do business with her and sell some of his wines through her auction house, Zaki's. And he showed up with a posse. Literally, he had like a group of guys with him. And he told me that he wanted to be a player and that Zaki's should take his wine because he was going to become a player in the wine market. That was a totally different Rudy than the guy I had known a year ago. Downey sees a few red flags. For one thing, she is suspicious of how quickly he's become a connoisseur. Rudy went kind of from zero to 60 in about four seconds. You know, as an analogy, he went from California Merlot to old and rare, still Merlot from Bordeaux, you know, straight into Burgundy. And that, it's just not natural that anybody would go through those steps that quickly. Another red flag is the record of ownership of the wine he's offering for sale, or rather, the lack of a record. Its history is a mystery. So I knew something was, was strange, and he couldn't come up with receipts for the wine. So there was a number of problems that I had with them. So ultimately, I rejected the wines and uh, never took wine from him again. That's when I knew something was wrong, and that was in 2002. For years, Downey is alone with her doubts, and Kurniawan goes on to become the player he wants to be. Kurniawan tells the LA Times he spends $1 million a month buying incredibly rare wine, most of it from the great domains of Bordeaux and Burgundy. In just a few years, he becomes a dominating presence at fine wine auctions in New York, according to former federal prosecutor Jason Hernandez. He would stand up in the auction room, hold up his paddle, and he wouldn't sit down. So he wouldn't engage in the usual back and forth of the bidding process. What he was signaling to other buyers was, this lot is mine, I'm going to pay anything for it, and I'm going to get it. So at the time, in the world of serene wine auctions, to have someone as brash as that, uh, as young, stand up with their paddle to compete against multimillionaires, sometimes billionaires, for wine, uh, it really stood out. It gave him a name, it gave him the credibility he needed, that he wanted, and the attention, I think, that he desired, too. Kurniawan himself is an enigma. Of Chinese ancestry, but born and raised in Indonesia, Kurniawan tells a reporter, my family is very private. Burgundy collector Don Cornwell sees Rudy in action at wine auctions. Like many people, he wonders where he gets his money. Cornwell asks him point blank, what do you do for a living? Rudy's answer was that he didn't work. He was a member of a very wealthy Indonesian family. And that, you know, he took care of his mother and he was a wine collector. He's a 24-year-old, independently wealthy wine collector that came out of nowhere. Stories abound. He tells some people his family owns a beer distributorship in Indonesia. Sometime, he says, it's Heineken. Other times, he says, Guinness. There were so many different stories that he was telling that I find it hard to believe that anybody bought it. But they do. When he visits friends in New York, the L.A.-based wine collector Rudy Kurniawan parties hard. Still in his 20s, Kurniawan has already amassed one of the world's most valuable sellers of fine and rare wine. And he likes to share. Jay McInerney, author of Bright Lights, Big City, a novel about life in the fast lane in Manhattan, knows about wild parties. Now a wine writer, when McInerney attends a party with Rudy and his crew, even he's impressed with what he sees. There was a bottle of 1914 Paul Roger in the room, you know, a wine that was made when the uh, when, when shells were raining down on the German shells were raining down on the vineyards and, and, and Champagne. Although it happened to be a really great year, certainly several hundred thousand dollars worth of wine were consumed. People people were opening. Uh, $10,000 bottles at the tables. But these are not staid, stuffy affairs, according to journalist Ben Wallace. There was this group called the 12 Angry Men who were a tasting group 